one. It is the regional final in Greensboro between Iowa, the number two seed, and the number one overall seed, and only once beaten Lady Bears of Baylor. Iowa coming in as the Big Ten champions in the tournament, and that is what at stake, not just that trophy, but a trip to beautiful Tampa, where the Final Four gets underway on Friday. The winner of this game gets Oregon, making their first trip ever to the Final Four. UConn awaits the winner of tonight's finale between Notre Dame and Stanford. So Baylor is the big favorite in this game. Lisa Bluter for Iowa, firing up her team in the locker room. I don't care that they're the number one team in the country right now. That was yesterday. That was yesterday. It's not tonight. Tonight, you're the best team in America. You guys are the best team because you have passion, you're warriors, and you play together. Let's go take it. Come on. So Lisa Bluter getting her team ready to play. Ready to play? Oh, after that, shoot yeah. Uh, that's Carolyn Peck. I'm Pam Ward. Allison Williams joins us shortly. The big talk about this matchup is about three really good post players making Gustafson for Iowa, Kalani Brown, and Warren Cox for Baylor. And most teams, when they face Baylor, they're bringing double teams. But Baylor has figured out how to find the open player. So you'll see first Kalani Brown going down to the block. And check out Dee Dee Richards on the backside. She knows where to be at the right time. So when her defender leaves her for the double team, she cuts on the backside and she gets the easy two. South Carolina then tried to take Dee Dee Richards away when the ball went inside to Lauren Cox. You see Taya Cooper drop down, but you know what Baylor has? Juicy Landrum. She is shooting 50% from the three-point line. She is 7 of 14, and even if she misses down low, Baylor has three bigs to clean up the offensive glass. So Cox and Brown, the top two scorers for their team, the top two rebounders, and they have been highly decorated in their careers today. Kalani Brown named the second team AP All-American. Lauren Cox made the third team. But Lisa Bluter has somebody who's nothing to sneeze at in Megan Gustafson. Leads the country in scoring. Leads the country in field goal percentage. She also already has 33 double-doubles. She has a great game with the ability to finish with her left hand, right hand. And Pam, she puts on a show because she has tremendous footwork down low. She is the ESPNW National Player of the Year. Megan Gustafson, a senior, a brilliant career for more on her. Let's go over to Allison Williams. It really has been a remarkable run for Megan Gustafson at Iowa. During her four years with the Hawkeyes, she has rewritten the record books. Consider, she is the school's all-time leading scorer, men's or women's. She's the Big Ten Conference's all-time leading rebounder and a two-time player of the year in the Big Ten. But as she said Saturday after the game, she She's not done yet. Tonight, she could reach 1,000 points for this season, becoming just the fourth player to reach that mark. She only needs 22 to get there, and if she's able to record a double-double, it would be her 34th and an NCAA record. Just a couple marks to keep an eye on for Gustafson as she plays her that bigger goal of reaching the final four. She's shooting 70% from the floor. That leads the nation. In the NCAA tournament, she has elevated that to 76% from the floor. There is Gustafson, stands at 6'3". Kalani Brown is 6'7", and it should be a great matchup. Baylor has won 26 straight games, their lone loss to Stanford in mid-December. Cox jumps up against Gustafson, and we are underway. Chloe Jackson, the LSU transfer, runs the point for Baylor. And right away they go into Brown, unable to get it, and Gustafson has what will no doubt be the first of many rebounds. But you see the size advantage that Baylor has going right away to Kalani Brown. Take a look now at our Capital One starting lineups. Hannah Stewart is the power forward, and Megan Gustafson scores her first basket. Number one starting lineups for Baylor. Jackson runs the point. You heard Andy Landers talk about the backcourt. Juicy Landrum has been terrific from the outside. Dee Dee Richards never stops moving. Energetic all the way. Brown shoots from the outside. Cox cleans up inside. You see Baylor going into high-low action in Iowa. 
Look at Gustafson. She is just very patient, waiting to read what the defense gives her. She doesn't force anything. Gustafson right now drawing Brown a little bit away from the basket. This is only the second time these two teams have played. The last time was four years ago in the Sweet 16. As Stewart misses, Baylor won that game. Neither team has any players remaining from that one and only matchup. Brown from the outside, off the back iron. Richards, who we just talked about, always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Well, she recognized when she came through in transition, knowing that Kalani was on the trail, she positioned herself to get that offensive rebound. Kathleen Doyle, a junior guard from LaGrange Park, Illinois, drives in as you get a good look at Richards, who is talking as usual. Lisa Bluter in her 19th year, most wins in the history of Iowa, the first time that she has taken her team to the Elite Eight. Last time was 93 under Vivian Stringer. Turnaround by Gustafson well off the mark. This is what's unappreciated, I believe, for Baylor's transition. They're looking to score quick. Well, great job by Hannah Stewart to get in front of Brown and force the turnover. Tanaya Davis took a step, and it was called by Kim Mulkey over there. And she told us she was going to wear orange and mustard today. And that's a very orange suit. Look, even the shirt matches the shoes. And Pam, when we were at her house in the closet, I don't believe I saw that outfit. I, I think not. that's, that's a, a new one. That's brand new just for this uh, for this big special Elite Eight game. Carolyn Peck took a tour of her closet in Waco. Another turnover as Brown threw it away. And Melissa Smith at Coach Mulkey's heed gets off the bench. Davis well short. And now here's Juicy Landry. She actually has been leading this team in scoring through their first three NCAA games. Taking a lot of pressure off of Brown and Lauren Cox. They have earned three wins, averaging 97 points per game in the NCAA tournament. Here's Juicy, bottom of the net for three. Second team all Big 12, the Waco native. And... Gustafson goes underneath and Brown blocks her shot. Doyle gets it out to Stewart, who hits it very calmly. And it, needless to say, Iowa's got to hit those shots from the outside. And Stewart's been shooting the ball very well. She's shooting 50% in the NCAA tournament, 16 of 32 from the floor. Had a double-double in the Sweet 16 win against NC State. Baylor dismantled North uh, South Carolina, 93-68. Cox, another versatile player who can stretch the defense. She has a couple of buckets already. Two-time defensive player of the year. We've already seen Brown with a block shot, but that's something that Lauren Cox has turned into uh, one of the best shot blockers in the country. Gustafson challenges Kalani Brown. And one thing Lisa Bluter said is that Gustafson could not get discouraged if Brown blocked her shot to keep attacking. We watched Iowa against NC State. Gustafson went early against Kunane, got a little frustrated, but now Gustafson has been very patient, and she's got that post-patience in understanding where the defense is and finding an opportunity. Hey, you're going to get your shot blocked when you're going against 6-7. That's okay. You've got to keep going at her. Third Baylor turnover gives it back to Iowa. Stewart lost it, and then fouled Richards for her first foul. NIT heads to New York City. Semifinal action tips off Tuesday. That's tomorrow at 7 Eastern. Doubleheader, Wichita State Lipscomb, then Texas TCU. On ESPN and the ESPN app, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Man, we saw Melissa Smith come to the table, but then Kalani Brown picked it up, and Kim Mulkey called her back to the bench. She's going to let her senior stay on the floor. Had a little second thought about that, and Brown, you double her, and she still is able to score. That's the first field goal for Kalani, averaging about 15 and a half points per game. I think Kalani has felt a little slighted. There's a sports writer that didn't feel like she's got much agility to her game, so I think today she's trying to play like she's got something to prove. Side Gustafson. She's a lefty and drew the foul. Gustafson prefers to do most of her work on the left block, but that time using that dominant left hand spun from the right. Either side of the floor, she is dangerous because she has the ability to go to her left hand or her right. 
She's just got tremendous patience in recognizing where the defense is and attack. In addition to everything else she does well, she's a terrific free throw shooter at 80%. She is now 14 of 16 in this tournament, over 90% still. Chloe Jackson with the miss. Gustafson able to come up with the rebound. Iowa down four. Amanda Olinger, a 6'1 junior, number 43 in black, has checked in as Lisa Booter gets some more height into her lineup. She came in for Stewart. Nice pass over to Gustafson, who might not have been expecting it. She's so, what's the word? Crafty. Crafty. Very good word. Yeah. Did you see, though, how Iowa moved the basketball? These two teams are one and two in assists per game in the entire nation. Steal by Doyle. Kathleen Doyle ties it up. Also coming in, Baylor, first in the nation in field goal defense. Iowa, number one in field goal offense. So a lot of strength against strength in this matchup. Richards with that funky shot, but it went in. And leadership ability for a sophomore. When they were coming down the floor, she said, we're all right. She called the play and called her own number. Gustafson over Brown, left a short rebound by Richards. The Big 12 all defensive team. Cox for three. Doyle able to sneak in and come up with the basketball. Ty Davis who Looks inside to Gustafson, felt the pressure. Doyle lost it, and now Juicy Landrum challenged by Meyer. And who else but Dee Dee Richards? Runs the court, follows, and puts it in. And Kim Mulkey yelling at both of her post players because Cox and Brown, they didn't even get across half court. So four straight points by Richards. Gets Baylor the lead back. Inside, Gustafson got it blocked that time by Brown. Baylor for the second straight year leads the nation in blocks per game. I win a zone. But Olinger and Cox are physical matchup under there. Cox with the miss. That was part of Iowa's game plan. To no to make Lauren Cox know that there's always somebody around her that's going to bother her. Richards forces another turnover. Brown double gets it to Richards. Doyle tried to draw the charge, nothing doing, and that is off Gustafson. Great end-to-end -end action. First time out with Baylor up four. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One, what's in your wallet, and in part by the magic of Walt Disney World Resort Hotels. With my lack of mobility, maybe her trying to get around me will be the biggest issue. Um, I'm just going to try to move my feet and stay with her. I mean, we're both lefties, so uh, we'll see. She's still 6'7". Um, I don't know what you mean by mobility. She's not a perimeter player. Gustafson's not a perimeter player. Kalani had to guard Anigwe, who averaged a double-double for Cal, who was on pace to have tons of double-doubles. So that kid's pretty athletic. Kalani guarded her. So I'm not sure where this mobility problem people keep bringing up comes from. That was Kim Mulkey in a press conference over the weekend as Cox finishes. Well, don't get fooled by the eye test. If you stand right next to Kalani Brown, you may assume that she may not be as agile as she is. But this young woman can cover a lot of space for being 6'7". She was speaking specifically about a writer who said that she seemed to have a lack of mobility. And Kalani speaking a little tongue-in-cheek and Kim Mulkey talking about it as well. Megan Gustafson country and scoring is on the bench right now. Hannah Stewart gets her own miss. Stewart missing badly and Iowa is a team that uh, has gone has not hit a three yet tonight. Only 
and 5 of 15 from the floor. Gustafson will come back in at the next whistle. She plays a lot of minutes, thir over 34 on average. Jackson gives Baylor its biggest lead. Chloe Jackson coming over from LSU as a grad transfer, told Kim Mulkey she wanted to win one of the win conference championships, wanted to play for the national championship. And she's already got the conference championship under her belt. Ty Davis with the runner, rebound on the floor, and it is chased down by Landrum. Jackson. Contact, and they'll call a charge on Chloe Jackson. Was Doyle there? I don't know. And uh, Joe Vasili, Denise Brooks, Amy Bonner are officials, and it almost looked like Joe Vasili was going to put his arms up like it was a blocking foul. And then he tricked you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, psych. And it was uh, a, a charge. Gustafson back in, not backing down from Kalani Brown. Gustafson's finish was impressive, but the delivery from Duel, that pass, she knows exactly how to get her post player the basketball. Doyle averages six assists per game, led the Big Ten in that category. And you're, and that's, and you're a former post player. It's the delivery and where you get it is so important in the timing. Well, don't make me have to get out of my position to go get it. Oh, that's a foul. And Kalani Brown hits to the free throw line. Well, right now, Iowa is trying to be in a triangle in two. So what do you do? Run a ball screen. Uh, Chloe Jackson rejected it. And who is it? Dee Dee Richards flashes to that open free throw line area to put herself in the position for the high-low to Kalani Brown. Second foul on Hannah Stewart. She sits down. Alexis Civilian is in. Cox gets the offensive rebound off the free throw miss. Baylor can take the last shot of the quarter. Jackson. Gustafson gets another rebound. They have to hurry. Doyle with the heave. First quarter belong to Baylor. 21 to 13 after 10 minutes for the trip to the final four to the winner. Getting set for the second quarter of this Elite Eight matchup between Baylor and Iowa here with Hawkeyes head coach Lisa Bluter. Coach Bluter, you told your team this would be a 40-minute dogfight. How do you assess the first 10? Well, right now I'd like us to box out a little bit better. You know, we're getting beat on the offensive glass, but also I want more people involved in our offense right now. we got to have our guards spotting up and ready to shoot threes and putting them down. A lot of people interested to see the matchup between Brown and Gustafson. How do you assess the post play so far? I don't know. We're 10 minutes in. we got 30 more minutes. We'll see. Lisa, thank you. Thanks, Alex. I think Lisa Bluter nailed it. Hit the nail on the head with boxing out because right now Baylor is out rebounding Iowa 13 to 9 in Iowa's losses this season. They were out rebounded by an average of 11 rebounds a game. When they win, they're plus over nine rebounds a game. And there are some of the numbers as well. They only took one three point shot in that first quarter and they missed it. This is an Iowa team that has some really good three-point shooters. Mackenzie Meyer, Tanaya Davis, Kathleen Doyle all can hit from the outside. Gustafson lost it. That was the fifth turnover for the Hawkeyes. Baylor ended that first quarter on a 10-2 run after Iowa had deadlocked the game at 11. Chloe Jackson, one of the best mid-range shooters in the country, makes it a double-digit lead. Doyle with the miss, one and done for Iowa. Could be a dangerous time here for the Hawkeyes because Baylor can score points in a hurry. 2019 NCAA Men's Final Four begins Saturday on CBS at 6 Eastern from Minneapolis. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Auburn, Virginia, Texas Tech, and Michigan State facing off. Those games were fun to watch yesterday. Cox, saw them work that, didn't we, at shoot-around today, and that's just too easy. 
uh, Kim Mulkey told her team, told Lauren, you're going to be wide open because they're going to be focused on Kalani Brown. And they were. And she was, and she hit it. One of the things that Lisa Bluter wanted was for her guards to spot up and shoot it, but when you look at the reach, the size of Baylor's guards, they're making tough shots. They're making every shot that Iowa has to take a tough one. Kanani Davis, 5'3", senior, who has come back from two separate ACL injuries, gets her first points. They're still in a triangle and two right now, focused on saying on Juicy Landrum and Chloe Jackson. Amy Richards gets it over to Lauren Cox. And a blocking foul called on Amanda Olinger. Lauren Cox's mom and dad. Lauren is from Flower Mound, Texas. Brenda and Dennis making the trip. And Lauren Cox has just been just getting better every single year. I'm going to get you one of those shirts that Dennis had on. It's <laughs> Kim Mulkey is your girl. This is my home girl. Home girl. Right? Oh, yeah. Another whistle. And this time a foul on Juicy Landry. Picks up her first. First team foul in the second quarter for this Baylor Bear team. Pam, you remember when we were in Waco in the first quarter against Cal. It was a tight game. Second quarter when Baylor came out, Kim Mulkey really let them loose and said, turn it up defensively. And that's where they were able to create that separation. And they won 102 to 63. That's 39 points. You are a walk-in calculator. Gustafson able to get inside. She is into double figures. More contact and a charge drawn. That is two on Landra. Drawn again by Kathleen Doyle. Just understanding where to get your eyes up quickly when you're a post player, when you catch the ball. You get your eyes up quickly and find your target for the finish. So Landrum sits down with two fouls, but Moon Urson comes in. Sophomore who can also give them some scoring punch. Number 12, you see her defending Meyer. And a five second call. This is turnover number six for the Hawkeyes. Usually they take care of the ball very well. Second in the nation in assist to turnover ratio. Taken away by Olinger. And Olinger getting some playing time in this. Only average about 12 minutes during the season coming in. And now Lauren Cox is defending Megan Gutsison. Wild shot thrown up, and it looks like Doyle is a little shaken up. You can tell both teams are trying their best. They want to get to Tampa. This game is physical. You got to play strong and go after it. Doyle able to get off the court under her own power, but has been replaced by Alexis Civilian in for the second time, number five. And you see Iowa best field goal percentage defense against Baylor's best field goal percentage defense, best offense against best defense. And so far, Baylor is winning that battle. I was shooting only 38% from the floor. 14% below their average. I think the best defensive team has the advantage, but you also, when you add to it, you've got that ability to produce points. It definitely tilts the scales your direction. Foul called on Meyer, the first on her. And that sends Kalani Brown back to the line. And she is 0 for 1. There's D Brown, Kalani's mom. And I know she's happy to see her baby girl, her senior, got off to a slow start. Kim Mulkey was 
about to sub her early, but Kalani picked things up, and that's the trust that Kim Mulkey has in her senior to leave her on the floor and let her play through those early minutes of nerves. Kim Mulkey, a terrific player at Louisiana Tech, then became an assistant coach, recruited Dee to play at Tech. And now Dee's little girl is 6'7", and a senior at Baylor. Doyle hits it, finally, Iowa gets its first three-pointer of the game. It's still in a double-digit deficit. And Iowa changing up their defenses again, now in a 1-2-2. Cox -two -two. takes it right to Olinger. Gustafson gets another rebound. Quickly up to Tania Davis. Gustafson on that left block. That's the block she prefers. Knocked away momentarily. And the shot clock hits single digits. Pressure defense by Dee Dee Richards. She really, that whole possession, she gave her all on the defensive side. As usual for her, Olinger with the good offensive rebound. And a few for Iowa. Gustafson well out. Doyle again, back to back. And if Kathleen Doyle gets hot from out there, look out. She was only two for 13. Or make it one for nine, excuse me, overall in the NCAAs from distance. And she's hit two of them here. Jackson rims out. Gustafson got good position on Brown. Six rebounds for Gustafson. Davis challenges Urson. They are always quick up court. Kalani in and out. Gustafson guarded by Cox gives it up to Tania Davis. Tried to go up and under and left it short. This is the smallest player out on the floor, listed at 5'3". Cox just muscled her way past Olinger. She's got 12 points. Davis draws a foul. Timeout on the floor. Iowa's trying to hang in here, trying to keep Kim Mulkey upset and making plans by driving in, causing the defense to come off shooters. That's just what Lisa Bluter has ordered from the Hawkeyes. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Golden Corral, featuring endless sirloin and seafood. Assist to Rebecca Lobo carrying the blue, royal blue theme <laughs> yes. through with us tonight. And it's amazing because we don't speak to each other, so <laughs> it's not like it's orchestrated. Here is Tanai Davis at the free throw line. Honorable mention, all Big Ten performer. A couple of ACLs that we talked about. Missed complete Big Ten season. She missed a red shirt by just two games last year when she tore her ACL. One of the leaders on this team. Story of the score right now, Gustafson and Doyle doing most of the work. Lauren Cox, as Mel Fortner mentioned, has been terrific. And that field goal percentage for Iowa, well below their season average. That's too easy if Kalani Brown gets it there. Rebounding in defense is what Baylor has built, has built on. That's the stipend for Kim Mulkey's basketball teams. is something that 
you don't really hear a lot of with Baylor, but they're 10th in the nation in scoring defense and offense for that matter. And it's, Shot clock winding it down. It starts with that one right there. Number two, Dee Dee Richards, her pressure. Stewart missed it, did get a piece of the iron. And now all the way down four and finding Melissa Smith for the easy bucket. The main perimeter scorer that Baylor is worried about right now is Kathleen Doyle, and that is who Dee Dee Richards is guarding. And from the outside, Davis can't hit from beyond the arc, and the ball goes out of bounds to Baylor. Coming up next, one more Elite Eight matchup, Notre Dame and Stanford in the Chicago Region Final with the last spot on the Final Four. Remember, this game also streams live on the ESPN app. That's going to be exciting. They're going to talk about in the studio at halftime, Enrique Agumbawale, Atlanta Smith, some great talent. It's going to be a lot of shooting, a lot oh, yeah. of scoring going on in that game after this one. Lauren Cox, have a game, young lady. She's got 14 points in the first half. Lisa Bluter just told her team to continue to chip away. She wants them to keep showing that fight even though they're down double digits here to Baylor. And that was the message that we saw this morning in shoot around. She gathered them up at center court and handed out a sheet of paper with a quote from Jesse Owen saying, one chance is all you need. The message, we have that tonight. It doesn't matter what's happened in the past. It has no bearing on tonight. We both start 0-0. She had everyone repeat together. 40 minutes between us and the final four. She wanted them to have that belief coming into this game, and she's continuing to instill that as they go on. Now, listen, I love that. It wasn't just her really trying to encourage and saying it to them. She had it, had them repeat that to themselves. If you can say it, you can see it and believe it, you have the possibility of achieving it. Dee Richards now gives, however, Baylor its biggest lead at 16 points. Doyle with the miss. This is an Iowa team that has not been to the Final Four since 1993. Something's hurting Dee Dee Richards. Something's not right about number two right now in the wing. She's staying in the game, no movement from the Baylor bench. Remember, this is a Baylor team that has not been to the Final Four since 2012, the last time they won a national championship. Cox, just a little bit short, and Megan Gustafson, perhaps her ninth rebound of the night. Stewart, another blown layup for Iowa. That's at least three makeable shots. And Megan Gustafson inside a minute now, close to a double-double already, which would set a new NCAA single-season record. But I'm sure what she's most concerned about is her team being down big. Jackson. Richards hit the deck, had to go over to Cox, who just saved it. Shot clock at one. Jackson just recognized. And Iowa will have the shot clock turned off. Hawkeyes have gone cold. They have missed their last seven shots. Civilian gets the word from Coach Bluter. Gustafson on the right block with Kalani Brown. Stewart gets it into Gustafson, and she hits the bucket. 13 points and nine rebounds for Megan Gustafson, but Kim Mulkey's team with a 41. 27 advantage as they head into the dressing room. Baylor plus 12 points in the paint. Lauren Cox has been brilliant. Well, she's used her size and her dominance to really power over the defense of Iowa inside. And Lauren is standing by with Allison Williams. Thank you very much, Lauren. A plus 12 advantage for Baylor in the paint. What's been the key to having success inside? Uh, they're really packing it, so it's hard to get it in there. But uh, when we can, we got, just got to take advantage of it like we've been doing. We take a 41-27 lead into the half. What will be the most important thing for you guys to do in the final 20 minutes? The first five minutes of the third quarter are the most important. We can't let them hit a bunch of threes, get a bunch of shots inside. Uh, we just got to go on our own run. Lauren, thank you. Thank you. Iowa shot only 33% from the floor in the first half. Let's get you back to the studio and Maria Taylor.
The AA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Second half about to get underway in this Elite Eight matchup. The number one overall seed, Lady Bears of Baylor, lead Iowa 41 to 27 at the break. The winner goes to Tampa to play Oregon in the Final Four on Friday night. Welcome back to Greensboro. Pam Ward along with Carolyn Peck. Allison Williams is with us as well. Time now to take a look at the Google Cloud highlights. Lauren Cox had quite a first half. She's had to do a lot of the work because of the battle of Megan Gustafson and Kalani Brown. So what does Lauren Cox do? She makes herself available wherever and whenever she's needed. And she's really played a little bully ball of her own, using her size advantage and taking the ball to the basket instead of just settling and taking outside jumpers. Now let's go over to the third member of our team, Allison Williams. Hey, Pam, spoke with Iowa's Megan Gustafson at the half. She said it wasn't too bad in the Iowa locker room, even though they're down 14. She said we just have to come out here, treat it like it's 0-0. It's a new half. Play our hearts out and leave it all out on the court. But a couple adjustments they need to make defensively, especially with their transition defense. They have to do a better job getting back. She said if we can just get some back-to-back -back stops, start to chip away at this thing, and that'll all help our offense, too, if we can be better defensively. And that's the right mindset. It is 0-0. Anything can happen, especially with the ability of Iowa to knock down outside shots. Mackenzie Meyer has got to get going for the Iowa Hawkeyes and pull the trigger from beyond the three-point line. Meyer only took one shot in the first half. Dee Dee Richards continues to be a demon on the boards for Baylor. She is into double figures now. Megan Gustafson with 13 points and nine rebounds in the first half. She goes right to work against Brown and was fouled by Cox, who was helping out on the weak side. That's only the first foul on Warren Cox, who did have a terrific first half, 14 points, five rebounds. And Megan Gustafson heads to the free throw line. A senior from Port Wing, Wisconsin, population 164. And the mic and drill is something that she loves to do and has sort of gone viral. Well, we saw her earlier do it the regular way. Now she's shown us that she's got the reverse mic as well. And Pam, to add to it, she went three ball mic and it's kind of like juggling. So it's not just the footwork, but the concentration with her hands. This is a player that's always challenging herself to take her skill to another level. And she enjoys working all the time. She always says she goes into the gym on days off and most of her teammates are in there shooting. Landrum left a little bit short. Doyle gets the rebound. Here's a two on one. She has Davis to her left, gets it to her, but Dee Dee Richards runs the court and makes the stop. The hustle. Number two, Dee Dee Richards. This is a sophomore, a sophomore. You can tell she's putting everything on the court, leaving it on the court. She wants to get her senior, Kalani Brown, to Tampa. Richards with the ball right now. Was it at McDonald's All-American in high school? And has been the energy at all times for this team. Lauren Cox sticks with it and gets the putback. Watching Baylor shoot around and at practice, when they walk in the gym, Dee Dee Richards' mouth is running constantly. Davis hits the three, much needed. Davis was 0 for 2 from distance in the first half. That's it to a 14-point advantage. And we talked to Kim Mulkey about Dee Dee Richards, if her talking ever bothered her. She said, no, she knows when to stop. <laughs> Cox can't be stopped. 18 points now for her. We remind you that coming up at the top of the hour, we'll get you out to Chicago. Gustafson, what a move to get around Brown and beat Lauren Cox to the spot. She just thinks quick, makes the decision quickly of where she wants to go and goes and gets it done. Very, very quick and has tremendous footwork. That's something that you were impressed with. Oh, Jackson's such a good outside shooter. Balance. Balance is key in the post game, not leaning too far one direction or the other, and to play light on your feet, and that's what Gustafson does. Back-to-back -back Big Ten Player of the Year, back-to-back -back scoring champion in the entire nation. Hannah Stewart was only one for six from the floor in the first half. 
senior from Minot, North Dakota, who barely played as a freshman, stuck with it, and now is in the Elite Eight. Back to back for Chloe Jackson. It's gonna be the two guard. Alexis Morris kicked off the team, or excuse me, dismissed from the team. And Jackson was what, maybe the third choice to play point. She's flourished. Lauren Cox with the block. And a whistle before the shot. Kim Mulkey with her full pained expression. NIT heads New York City. Semifinal action tips off Tuesday. That's tomorrow at 7 Eastern. Wichita State Lipscomb followed by Texas TCU. NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. You can catch it on ESPN and the ESPN app. Tonight, Davis called for the foul before the shot. Kalani Brown gets a rest. And Dee Dee Richards not stopping. Davis beating Alyssa Smith and swats it. For a minute there, Davis thought that the sea had parted, but all of a sudden it closed up real quick. And Baylor leads the country in blocks per game. Meyer off the back rim. Cox by Olinger and drew the foul. Actually, she committed the foul. The charge called on Lauren. That is number two for her. She looks over at Kim Mulkey and said, I'm okay, you'll be all right. <laughs> but Kim Mulkey now, that's the usual position for her, squatting on the sideline. She's getting ready to turn things up. Gustafson somehow was able to gather Still got the shot off. Richards with the miss. Rebound, Juicy Landrum. Jackson with a rare miss from the outside. And D.D. Richards kept it alive at least for a second. And now Megan Gustafson. Gustafson, she's going to recognize Hustle. Gustafson helped Richards up and patted her on the back after that play. Well, because that's how Gustafson plays. You can appreciate that even if it's from your opponent. Hey, let's play this all out. Gustafson being checked by Cox now with Brown on the bench. Doyle trying to get it in. That's a tough spot, and it was absolutely stuffed by Lauren Cox. You can tell that Lauren Cox played volleyball. Her timing is special. So quick off her feet, too, which is the mark of a good volleyball player. Richards thinks about it, goes in to Smith, unselfish, gets the assist. Now Baylor's turning it on, up 20. Their biggest lead of the night. Winner gets Oregon Friday night. UConn awaits the winner of our nightcap between Notre Dame and Stanford. Cox almost forced the turnover. Olinger missed it. I'm going to say this, and it's early in the third quarter. MVP of this regional so far for me, Dee Dee Richards. Her hustle play, she in the right place at the right time offensively and giving you all she can on the defensive end. Cox able to grab the rebound over Olinger to give him a fresh shot clock. And Stewart will come in for Lisa Bluter at the next whistle. Rebound taken down by Mackenzie Meyer, a junior from Mason City, Iowa. Davis with the floater and a foul call on Baylor. It's a 20-point advantage. Kim Mulkey's team is up 20, even though her expressions might not show that. Welcome back, Baylor with a 20-point lead on Iowa here in this Elite Eight matchup. The Bears, of course, led by Kim Mulkey, known for making some serious fashion statements, and she's doing so here tonight, rocking the orange power suit, a la Lisa Renna. It is a full-on red carpet matchup here. 
Well, who wore it better? You got the yellow turtleneck, the orange suit. But I like that Kim went with the yellow matching heels. I think that gives her a little edge over the nude pump you could. that Lisa went with. You were in her closet, Carolyn, and you didn't see anything this bright and fabulous. Did I you? did not. This is definitely new, but I love the shoes with the shirt. You kind of coordinate <laughs> with a little bit more of a pop. And Kim Mulkey going double-breasted. Lisa Renna just with a more regular cut. That's all I can say about fashion. That was a good eye, though, for you to notice that. <laughs> looking for, you know, like nice puzzles Pam. in kids' magazines. I, I can crush those. <laughs> Davis got one free throw to fall. And Kim Mulkey again trying to get Kalani Brown to the Final Four. Her team has not been there since 2012. There's been a lot of disappointment in between. There's Kalani now on the bench. Nina Davis was such a great player in all four years for Nina Davis. It ended in the Elite Eight, and we've had a or Baylor's had a Sweet 16 loss since then. Stewart fouled as she fronted Melissa Smith. And that is what it's been like. And that loss to Louisville, the very famous loss, that was a senior year for Brittany Griner when Shoni Schimmel scored that famous layup over her to, to knock him out in the Sweet 16, then the Nina Davis era, and Oregon State beating him last year in the Sweet 16. We watched the two Sweet 16 games day before yesterday. Iowa, when they won and beat NC State, they were jumping around with jubilation. They were all excited. When Baylor won, when they beat South Carolina, it was like, they were on a business trip. They went immediately when the game was over shaking hands because they're operating as if this is unfinished business. The only team that would be unsatisfied if they don't get to the final four, dissatisfied both. This is again the number one overall seed is Baylor. Oh, that hit Warren Cox right in the head. The no-look pass was not looked at by Cox, and it hit her in the head. You gotta be ready for it. JC Landon got her. A little red mark on the right side of the forehead, it looks like. Stewart working against Cox, who plays good defense. I think that's an underrated aspect of Lauren Cox's game, is her defense. And look at Dee Dee Richards going after it again. Like, big girls, always have your hands ready. Otherwise, you're going to get pegged right in the dome. You got to always look for that basketball. And that ball went a long way after it hit Warren, who is staying in the game. And the junior friend of Kalani Brown. Among those who keep mentioning how much they want to get to the Final Four for her. And also, about Chloe Jackson. She's a grad student. This is her first year at Baylor, but her last year playing college ball. So Baylor just continues to reload year after year, talent after talent. And when you have a player like Kalani Brown and you are trying to recruit a Lauren Cox who plays the same position, a lot of players would shun away from that and go, no, I want to go where I'm the star. Lauren Cox wanted to come to Baylor to play with Kalani Brown. Kim Mulkey and her staff continues to get some of the top-rated recruiting classes in the country. When you look over the last uh, few years, Satya Messer has been the recruiting coordinator, and she's put classes together like just this last one, 2018, the Fierce Five that had Akira DaCosta, Alyssa Smith. Uh, you had Honesty at Queen of Egbo. And to add to that, going to have be able to get Chloe Jackson when she transferred from LSU, that was one of the number one classes in the country. Satya Messer. Six year on the staff, played at Arkansas, and went to the Final Four when Gary Blair was the head coach. She when put they, Arkansas on the map yeah, now. She was a great player at Arkansas. She's been a tremendous coach. She was at one point a head coach at Tennessee Tech and felt like she would never get an opportunity to be a head coach in the Power Five, being at a smaller lesser power five schools. So she came back, went to Georgia Tech, and Kim Mulkey got her to Baylor. And that has been a great combination. And Kim compliments how well Satya knows her. She knows the type of players that Kim wants to bring to Baylor, and that's what Satya Messer brings in. And you would think that she definitely should get another chance to be a head coach somewhere. Satya Messer, I'm sure Kim would hate to lose her. 
Iowa has not scored a field goal in almost five minutes. Lucy Landrum with the miss. Cox with the rebound. Jackson one-handed that in. Oh, Jackson, terrific mid-range jumper. Melissa Smith and some of her teammates already starting to dance. Baylor up big as we take a timeout. Welcome back. Baylor is up big, Carolyn Peck. Well, you've got a headsy player like Lauren Cox who recognized when she got that rebound, she was beneath the backboard, didn't have a good shot. So what does she do? She surveys the situation and finds an open shooter. Lauren Cox is having a terrific game, 20 points, eight rebounds. Chloe Jackson running the show, trying to get to the final four for the first time for all of these players. Megan Gustafson back in the game. 16 points, nine rebounds. And then a foul on Richards for running into the screen. That is the third on Dee Dee Richards, who has 12 points and nine rebounds. So Dee Dee just a rebound away from a double-double, and she is coming off. A career high 25 points against South Carolina in the Sweet 16. She hit 11 of her 14 shots. When you go a career high at 25, and she only averaged just a little over six points a game coming in to this weekend. That's the kind of player you want on your team. Every coach in the country should want a player like Dee Dee Richards. She brings energy. She doesn't have a bad day, even early in the morning. Yeah. She's not sleepy, dragging. She's bringing energy every second she's on the floor. So the first two points for Mackenzie Meyer, which is a red flag for Iowa. She averages nine and a half points per game. Civilian gets it from Davis, and Cox tipped it away yet again. We have one more game to go for a spot in the Final Four. It is in Chicago. Stanford taking down Notre Dame the last two times they played in the NCAA tournament, but the Irish, the defending national champs, coming up next from Chicago. We have Enrique Gumbawale, and also Jackie Young has had a phenomenal season. She's made some incredible plays and moves this season. Looking forward to that one. That game will take on UConn in the final four in Tampa. There's a foul, excuse me, a foul on Kalani Brown that will send Gustafson back to the free throw line. Kim is like, what? Gustafson just two of six from the line tonight. Usually she's an 80% free throw shooter. Take, it will wear and tear on you when you've got to go against the physical play of Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox and Kim Mulkey has really switched up, kept a fresh body going against Megan Gustafson. Richards was only out for a couple of minutes. She comes back in with her three fouls. We've had a chance to speak with Megan Gustafson several times over the last few days, and she really is an extraordinary kid. She's a nice kid, and all of her teammates, her coach says she never has. We talk about Dee Dee Richards never being down, but Gustafson, in fact, her mom calls her smiley case because Megan is always smiling and happy. And she loves the game. She Off the plays court. so hard. Always working to get better. Warren Cox spins again and gets a basket. But off the court, Gustafson is all smiles. On the court, she is all business. And SPNW's National Player of the Year. There's no doubt that she will be on, just, on every All-American team this year. Named first team All-AP today. Associated Press All-American. She'll be on somebody's WBA draft board as well. She works hard. This kid wants to be good. And she enjoys the process of getting better. Landrum had it pop out. As we go inside 30 seconds, just a couple of tenths of a second difference between the two clocks. Stewart challenging Cox and then thought better of it because Lauren has blocked a couple of shots big time today. And now Baylor can add to their lead. Lauren Cox gives it to Kalani Brown. 
Cox made a great play just to keep it in bounds and then got the sweet assist to Kalani Brown. When we come back, Allison Williams will speak with Kim Mulkey. Welcome back as we get ready to start the fourth quarter here with Baylor head coach Kim Mulkey. Coach Mulkey, your defense held Iowa for about five minutes without a basket in the third. They're shooting 30%. What's been the key defensively so far? Well, do what we do. We're, we're not doing anything different than we've done all year. We're not doubling Gustafson. She's a great player. We threw Kalani at her. We threw Cox at her. We had Melissa Smith come in a little bit. The bad is we put them at the foul line too early. When you have a lead, one of the worst things you can do is stop the clock. So you've got this lead, 23 points, 10 minutes away from a trip to the Final Four. How do you keep them in the moment? Keep playing. Keep playing. The score is zero to zero. Thanks, Coach. Well, actually, the score is 65 to 42. Baylor is outscoring Iowa in the paint now 44 to 16. Lauren Cox has been absolutely brilliant for them. And as Baylor is now 10 minutes away from a date with Oregon in the final four. We talked to the Baylor players. They talk about how badly they want to take Kalani Brown to Tampa. They've had the bracelets that said Tampa together that they've looked at every single day to get to a moment like this for an opportunity. I talked to Kalani Brown about the opportunity to get to the Final Four. She said her mentality is, I won't be denied. She said, I've accomplished so much throughout my career at Baylor. She's a first team all Big 12 player, the career field goal leader. She's won a Big 12 championship. And she said, the last thing I have to check off my list is that trip to the Final Four. It's all I could ever want is to finally make it there. And that is one of the only things missing on the checklist for Kalani. Well, to reach the Final Four, she's got nine and a half minutes to play solid right here and get to Tampa and at least put herself in the position to go after a national championship. Stewart with the nice turn. So after a slow start, Hannah Stewart has now gotten eight points. In that third quarter, Megan Gustafson got zero rebounds, which is highly unusual for her, averaging 13 and a half per game. And she was one rebound away from a double-double, which would set a new single season mark in Division I basketball. And Cox and Doyle ended up on the court. Sports Center tonight after Giants Dodgers on ESPN with Linda Cohn and the delightful Neil Everett. Eduardo Perez joins us to talk about baseball plus an inside look with Devin Booker. And we'll hear from Odell Beckham Jr. at Browns Camp. Sports Center at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. And Doyle has a chance to shoot free throws for Iowa. It's an awesome we'll get you up to speed on what's happening. Not just with this game, but with our nightcap right after us, top of the hour, Notre Dame taking on Stanford. Now, no dilly daddling dallying after the game. No, no, we got to get straight to a TV yeah, to watch right. that one nope. because you've got two great experienced coaches. And Muffet McGraw, her team, that not to take anything away from their defense, but they can score at all five positions. And Tara Vanderveer, her game planning and her defensive strategy against that, it's going to be like a chess match. But between those two great coaches. Again, coming up at the top of the hour in the final Elite Eight game, Kathleen Doyle just scored her first points of this half. Kim continues to coach him up over there. Kim getting a little upset with her team not taking care of the ball. I mean, if you're, you're going to Tampa, you just don't want to show up there and get a tan. You need to go there for a purpose. 14 turnovers for Baylor so far tonight, which is just one over their average. And they are second in the nation in assist to turnover ratio. Oregon, who we'll see in the Final Four, and who will play the winner of this game in Tampa, leads it. Lonnie Brown over Megan Gustafson for her 12th point. Brown took it away. 
He's forced a turnover. Landrum saved it inside. Now they're going to get a foul on Chloe Jackson. Kim Mulkey not upset about the foul call, but upset at Juicy Landrum, I believe, for not shooting. And that is now four on Jackson. Dee Dee was upset. Dee Dee Richards was upset with herself. And look what she did defensively, went right away to get the ball back. And she gets fouled by Tanaya Davis on the other end. We were talking about Dee Dee Richards and how talkative and upbeat she is all the time. And she actually was a roommate of Kalani Brown when, <laughs> when uh, last year when Dee Dee was a roommate. And let's just say Kalani wasn't too thrilled about it at first. Well, because Kalani is not a morning person, she said. I need a minute. And I understand it. I don't know if she drinks coffee. I know I need a cup in the morning. Where Dee Dee, she comes in just full of energy. Good morning. How are you today? And they had to get used to each other. And I asked Coach Mulkey, I said, how did those two get together? And you know what Kim does? She lets her staff, because her staff spends a lot of time in understanding the players in recruiting and all, and really looks at who needs to be with who. And making that decision that helps build the team chemistry on your team. Real smart. Kalani uh, grew to like her very much, but at first she was like, oh, what did I do to deserve this <laughs> as a roommate? Thought it was punishment. Yeah. <laughs> Gustafson missed everything. Frustrating second half. For the two-time Big Ten Player of the Year, leaving with so much on her resume. In fact, Iowa, this Iowa team, including Gustafson, the senior, no one had ever won an NCAA tournament game before this year. And they got all the way to the Elite Eight. And they have run up against a terrific Baylor team. Richards kept it alive yet again. And then was fouled by Doyle on the pursuit. That is a third on Doyle. Richards gets ready to inbound. Sophomore from Cypress, Texas. Led the Big 12 in assist to turnover ratio. How about Baylor had the top four players in assist to turnover ratio this year? Well, because Kim Mulk is going to make sure that you take care of the basketball, but she's also going to make sure you share the basketball. Don't come in here thinking you're going to just jack shots to make yourself a star. You make a star yourself a star by having a winning team. Landon was sliced down the middle of the lane. Gustafson. Setting up over on the left block. They try to get it to her, and she cannot handle it. Gustafson still without a rebound in this half. She is on a has had a season rather with 33 double doubles, which ties the NCAA single season record held by three others. Christina Nigway did it this year. Her double-double streak was ended by Baylor last week. And she was only 4 of 17 from the floor. And Igwe just was enveloped by the Baylor defenders. Moon Urson's turn. Her first basket. I do want to see Gutsison. She needs four points to get 1,000 in a season. And that would join very elite company as well. Rebound. Another miss in the paint, this time by Meyer. And the ball stays with Iowa. Boy, Lauren Cox continues to just hustle on every play. Both she and Dee Dee Richards, they, they, they're, no clock, they're no clock watching. Yeah, they're not looking at the score, certainly. Gustafson had it taken away by Richards. Richards, 13 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists. What a game. Following up a career-high 25 points in the Sweet 16. Person as the shot clock was expiring. They were with a Emphatic wins over Abilene Christian, Cal, South Carolina, and now nursing a 26-point lead over Iowa in the Elite Eight. And 
Get it to Gustafson, and she's fouled by Kalani Brown. She's got the potential to get two more points at the free throw line, and then with just two more after that would be a thousand points. She's got 996. Oh. This has not been the Megan Gustafson that we're used to seeing at the line. Usually she's money from there. Watching the post coach, Jan Jensen, and she talked yesterday constantly trying to prepare her team and her post players mentally, knowing you're going to get contact. Expect the contact. Keep your composure. And she stayed positive. The whole time, just when Megan was at the free throw line, she's speaking encouraging words of positivity to her post player at the free throw she's at the free throw line. Richard slices in, hits it, and celebrates. Time out. 4.41 to go. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Advil. You'll ask, what came with Advil? Arike Agumbawale comes up big. The bigger the situation, the bigger the moment. She just loves that. She's a playing highlight reel. I cannot wait to see that. Richards completes the three-point play. Edie Richards has been absolutely brilliant so far in the NCAA tournament. Gustafson, what a frustrating night for the All-American. Still does not have a rebound in this half. Does have 19 points. But Dee Dee Richards, her energy, but also her smarts. She knows her limitations. She doesn't try to play outside herself, but she's real good at what she does, and especially on the defensive end. Person. Makes it a 30-point lead. Gustafson on the left block being guarded by Kalani Brown. Gets the ball. Cox comes over to double, and she still scored. One more point. She needs one more point to reach 1,000 for this season. Yeah, in one season. A lot of players celebrate, and rightly so, if they get 1,000 points in a career. She is one point away from 1,000 in this season. She would trade them all, I'm sure, to win this game and get to Tampa. Gustafson with the block. Three and a half minutes to go. Cox, good defense all night long. Sport, Gustafson, baby. got it! Megan Gustafson, over a thousand points for this season. Only the fourth player in women's basketball Division I history to do that. And the last two buckets were so difficult. I didn't know if they were going to be able to, to happen, but I'm happy. And look at the company. She is with Kelsey Plum, the all-time leading scorer in the history of this game. Jackie Stiles at number two. Odyssey Sims, the former Baylor Bear. And now Megan Gustafson from Port Wing, Wisconsin. Doing it, and the Baylor fans get on their feet. Taken away, Davis, pounded by Richards, as she has been all night. But Tanaya Davis, the senior from Grand Blanc, Michigan, gets the bucket. Let's take a look now at our Capital One rewarding performance. There's been a lot of really good ones for Baylor tonight. Who do we go with? We're going with Lauren Cox. She's done such a nice job. I know that she will get a lot of recognition for her points and rebounds, but also some of the passes that she made today. She sees the floor so well. She doesn't force things. 
She makes it easy, and the game just comes to her. She has four assists tonight. Just over her season average. She was 11th in the entire Big 12 in assists. See, there goes that pass. She gives example, yep. She knows where and how to deliver the basketball. Assist number five into Kalani Brown that time. Gustafson. This time too hard off the glass. Substitution timeout. Substitution timeout. Lauren Cox and Kalani Brown exit stage left and do so. Cox with a double double, 22 points, 10 rebounds. And the quest to get Kalani Brown to the Final Four is going to work in their last opportunity. What a post combination. Good luck. Morgan's a great team. But any other Final Four team to deal with that duo? Remember, Baylor already this year, that's Nelissa Smith, beat UConn. Hannah Stewart goes out, the senior from Minot, North Dakota. What a great student athlete she has been. Tonight Davis as well. Their final games. Hannah Stewart, who as a freshman, played only 27 total minutes. Could have transferred out, stuck with it, and got to the Elite Eight. Now all that's left is to give a curtain call to Megan Gustafson. moment when Kim Mulkey hugs each one of these players as they come off the court as she hugged Chloe Jackson she said to her this is what you came here for absolutely that is exactly what Jackson did started her career at LSU actually started at NC State played a couple of years at LSU and then ended up at Baylor and she came there she told coach Mulkey I want to win championships I want to get deep in the playoffs and Chloe Jackson's going to the final four and not in playing the position she came to Baylor, thinking she was going to play, thinking she was coming off the bench, and she ended up being the starting point guard of the Baylor Bears. All smiles. The winning streak will go to 27 in a row. Just the one loss to Stanford right before Christmas, blemishing their record. And foul by Doyle. Look at this Baylor basketball team. They've got more games to play, but the only two players that they will leave off, lose off this squad for next year is Kalani Brown and Chloe Jackson. All of this talent will be back next season. Including Honesty Scott Grayson at the line, one of the freshmen on this team. They'll add to that Jordan Oliver, a one-two combo guard out of Dallas. And just continue to reload. So Tia Messer, she's got that roller deck. She says, okay, coach, what do you need next? Bringing in that talent. Megan Gustafson still on the floor. And her double-double streak looks like it's going to end. Foul on Doyle, and that will be her fifth. So Gustafson held without a, a rebound here in the second half. Does have 23 points, went over 1,000 for the season. And she is staying in the game as Scott Grayson goes right back to the line. But boy, what a career for Megan Gustafson. And it was fun, we were talking to Kim Mulkey today, and she was like, I didn't even really ever hear of her until the beginning of this season. She was someone a little bit under the radar, and these are just a few of the things she has accomplished. All-time leading score, male or female, at Iowa. She tied career, 
for the season, double doubles with 33. She went over 1,000 points within the season. She's a double major in finance and marketing. She's just a ter terrific young woman, both on and off the court. She will graduate on time in May. No doubt will be drafted in the WNBA. A disappointing finish to a brilliant and heartwarming career for Megan Gustafson, but just too much. Baylor Bears. Good news, Bears. You're going back to the Final Four. The drought has ended for Kim Mulkey's team. We will see them next in Tampa. Kim Mulkey's team dominating so far in this NCAA tournament. They held Iowa to 32% shooting from the floor. 9% below, the, below their previous low, and that was a game they lost at Purdue. So the nation's number one field